Hello everyone, welcome back to another lesson from the Bible with me, Pastor Doug. Prayer, what is it? Who are we talking to? Why do we close our eyes, bow our heads, fold our hands, or even say amen? Let's face it, there's a lot about prayer that might seem kind of strange, especially to a kid. And so that's what we'll be talking about today. Let's take a look at our main point. Say it with me. Jesus teaches me to pray. Good job. Parents, teachers, don't forget that you can go to faithville.com to find free resources for this lesson. But the greatest resource is, as always, something you already have. Invite the Holy Spirit to help you as you teach and train your kids. All right, everyone, let's get started. Hi, boys and girls. Guess what? Doug's not here right now because he went to grab... Come on, a little closer. A little closer. A little closer. Oh, oh, too close. Doug's not here right now because he went to go get pizza. Yay, pizza! Hot pizza straight from the oven with snurky cheese, delicious pepperoni, golden brown crust. Oh, my mouth is already watering. I can't wait. Okay, Dusty, pizza's here. Oh, it's here, it's here. Oh, is it really time? The moment I've been waiting for all my life? Okay, well, the moment I've been waiting 30 minutes for, that's a long time for a hungry dog to wait, you know. <laughs> okay, here's your plate. Um, cheese or pepperoni? Oh, let me think. Uh, oh, pepperoni. <laughs> okay, I'll get you a nice, Big piece to start here. How about oh that? Oh boy, okay. Ooh, oh, look at that. Okay, nice here you cheese. go. Oh, yummy. Oh. <laughs> hey, wait, 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 wait. What? Oh, right. I need to blow on it first. <laughs> Dusty, that is a little bit disgusting, actually. But that, that's not even what I was going to say. Uh, is it because you don't have your piece yet? I'm so sorry. Go ahead, grab your piece. Okay, you're very polite. I did grab my piece, but that's still not what I was going to say. Oh, we're still not ready? What else is there? Dusty, we have to pray first. Pray? Why? Well, because that's how we thank God for the food. Here, just bow your head and follow me, okay? okay. Like this. Okay. Dear Jesus, thank you for this food, this delicious pizza that we can't wait to enjoy. Thank you also for Dusty and all the kids. Amen. There, now we can eat. Finally. Oh, uh, Doug, what was the word you said at the end there? Mm -hmm. Oh, mm, amen. Yeah, that one. I heard it a lot, but I don't really know what it means. Hmm, well, uh, that's actually a really good question. Well, let me think. Amen basically means let it be so. It's a way of agreeing with, you know, what was said in the prayer. For example, uh, I could pray, dear Jesus, help me learn more about you and about prayer. Amen, or let it be so. Let it be so. What would happen if we ate without praying? <gasps> would our pizza make us sick? <laughs> no, your pizza's not gonna immediately go bad or anything like Whoa, that. So, you. yeah, don't worry about that. But we might begin to take things for granted, you know, forgetting that God is our provider, the one who gives us the food in the first place. Oh, I see. Yeah, not to mention, you'd be missing out on an opportunity to grow closer with God by talking to him. Prayer helps us grow closer to God? Yeah, you see, it's just like when you talk with a good friend. The more time you spend with them, the more you talk to them, the closer you'll become. And Jesus invites us to pray with him all the time. 
So not just before we eat? No, not just before we eat. I mean, you can pray um, in the morning when you get up or when you go to school. I mean, even when you go to bed. Wow, if I was praying all the time, I might run out of things to say. <laughs> I suppose so. But you know, Dusty, there was someone in a Bible story I'm thinking of who knew how important prayer was, and he did it often. In fact, he thought prayer was so important that he would pray even when it was against the law <gasps> and it put his life in danger. <gasps> even when his life was in danger? Yes, that's how important it was to him. Kids, would you like to hear that story? Great! I guess I'll just go get things ready. You can come along too, okay, Dusty? I'll oh, see you there. Uh, oh, okay. <sighs> Daniel, are you down there? Was your god able to save you from the power of the lions? Oh, <laughs> hi there. It's time for our Bible story. Today's story is about a man named Daniel who was thrown into a den of lions. <laughs> you can find this story in the Bible, in the book of Daniel, chapter six. Let's take a look. You see, it all takes place at a time when God's people were scattered to faraway lands. And Daniel found himself serving the king of Babylon. At the time, that was King Darius. King Darius saw that Daniel was a wise man. He chose Daniel to help him rule all of Babylon. In fact, Daniel was so good, he made the king's other advisors jealous. So the other advisors sought for a way to get Daniel in trouble. They searched and searched, but they found that he always did what was right. Hmm, a difficult decision. Lord, I shall pray on it. Then an idea came to them. They knew that Daniel always put God first, and that was the only way they could trap him. They went to King Darius and told him he should create a new law that said for 30 days, everyone in the kingdom should pray only to him. Anyone who prayed to any god or man other than the king would be thrown into the lion's den. King Darius agreed and signed the law. Now it was written down, it could not be changed. Daniel found out about this new law, but even still, he put God first. He went up to his room and prayed, just as he had always done. He prayed like this three times each day. This was just what the other rulers wanted. No, we got him now. Pray, just like you said. After spying on Daniel, they quickly ran to tell the king that Daniel had broken his new law. <clears throat> Dear King, Daniel has broken your new law. Unfortunately, he'll have to be thrown to the lions. The king was very upset. He knew Daniel was his best advisor. He didn't want any harm to come to him, but he knew he couldn't change the law that he made. Along with the other rulers, the king threw Daniel <gasps> into the lion's pit and returned home. Oh, oh boy. Uh, oh boy, this isn't good. All that night, the king would not eat or sleep because he worried for Daniel. Dear Lord, please save me from the mouths of the lions. Thank you, Lord. As soon as the sun was up, on, the king go. rushed to the lion's den and called out for Daniel. Daniel, you serve the living God. You always serve him faithfully. Has he been able to save you from the lions? Daniel answered, My king, may you live forever. My God sent his angel to shut the mouths of the lions. They haven't hurt me at all. The king was filled with joy. He ordered Daniel to be let out of the lion's den. And Daniel didn't have a scratch on him. Then King Darius ordered the evil advisors to be thrown into the lion's den instead, and they were quickly eaten. Oh, nice kitty, nice kitty. The king said, I order people in every part of my kingdom to respect and honor Daniel's God. He sets people free and saves them. He does miraculous signs and wonders. He does them in the heavens and on the earth. He has saved Daniel from the power of the lions. 
So Daniel had success while Darius was king of Babylon. Daniel knew that prayer was important, no matter what, even if his life was in danger. He prayed often, knowing that God would be with him and hear those prayers. We can know the same thing. Jesus tells us that God always is there to hear our prayers. Let's take a look at our main point one more time. Jesus teaches me to pray. Great job. Hello everyone, it's time to play Picture Pixel Puzzle. Correctly guess the image before it comes into focus. Ready, go. If you said a lion, you're correct. Daniel was thrown into the lion's den because he prayed to God. Even in this dark and dangerous place, the Lord heard Daniel's prayer. Thanks for playing Picture Pixel Puzzle. Like, hello everyone, welcome back to the lodge, eh? It's your old pal, Ranger Ron here. Hey, I'm doing really great today. You want to know why? It's because I just came back from a prayer walk out in the bush, eh? <laughs> yeah, I just love doing that. Something about being in God's beautiful creation, seeing the birds and the air, the fish, the trees, everything just really inspires me to, you know, talk with God. Have you ever done that? Have you ever gone on a prayer walk before? <laughs> you should try it sometime, eh? Especially if you could do it on a nice hike through the woods. But hey, I've been talking so much I almost forgot. We got a creature feature for today. Come on, let's go check it out. Here we are. Okay, let's see what our creature feature is for today. Oh boy, a monster! Run away! <laughs> no, just kidding. This is the Mantis religiosa, commonly known as the praying mantis. He's just an insect about the size of your hand. So we're seeing him up close here, eh? Look at those arms. They can deliver a powerful punch or a lightning quick grab. That's how it catches its food. They're terrific hunters. These guys live all over the world, eh? And they come in different colors, too. They're usually quite hard to spot because they blend in so well. They may look a bit scary. <laughs> Don't worry, though. They won't hurt people. Hey, you know, have you ever thought about how the praying mantis got its name? It's from the way that it holds its hands, eh? Uh, kind of like this. You see, it almost looks like the praying mantis is praying. <laughs> Pretty cool, eh? But that got me thinking, like, do you always have to put your hands together to pray like this? I mean, is there really a, a right way to hold our hands when we pray? Well, you know, it is helpful because when we hold our hands like this, it means that we can't pick things up or get distracted, and that might help us focus our thoughts on God. Kind of like when we close our eyes when we pray, you know? That way we're not looking around and, and getting all distracted and stuff. <laughs> oh, and, and sometimes when I pray, I like to kneel down or, or, or even bow my head. I think I do that because it helps me show God respect. It makes me feel like I'm talking to, well, a king. Remember, Rangers, the most important position is not the position of our body, but the position of our hearts and minds when we pray. All right, everyone. Thanks for visiting your old pal Ranger Ron here at the lodge, eh? And seeing this creature feature on the praying mantis. Don't forget to go outside and find your own creature feature. Okay, take care now, eh? Okay, let's see. All I have to do is hit this button and there we go. 
It should be working, but I wonder if it's loud enough. Hmm, let's test it. Dear God, I hope you can hear me okay. It's me, Dusty. Dusty, Dusty, turn it down. Oh, hi, Doug. Ah. Are you okay? Turn it down. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Doug. Oh, oh. Dusty, what are you doing? I'm praying. I thought that would have been obvious. Praying? What's all this for then? Well, to make sure I'm heard, of course. If God's all the way up there in heaven, I'm going to have to talk pretty loud for him to hear me. <laughs> this should do the trick! Oh, Dusty! Sorry. Dusty, I can see how you might think this, but it doesn't work this way. It doesn't? Well, then how's God supposed to hear me? Well, God doesn't have ears like a person. Does he have ears like a dog? N no, no, he doesn't have... What? Like an elephant? Not an elephant either. Dusty, God doesn't have ears like a dog or an elephant, or, or even a person for that matter. The point is that God can hear us all the time. He, he hears everything. Everything? Wow, those must be some pretty big ears. <laughs> I think you're still missing the point a little bit. You see, it's not that God has big ears per se. It's that he's always listening. Jesus says that God knows our every thought. And that means that we can pray silently, even just, you know, in our heads. Wow, that's really cool. I guess I won't be needing all of this then. Uh, do you think you could help me carry it back? Ooh, uh... I guess I could. It does seem pretty heavy. You, I mean, you've got the muscles for it, I'm sure. Uh, okay, I guess right, I'll just, just... Yep, with with your legs, not with your back. It's really heavy. Oh, uh, you got okay. this. Yeah, just maybe count to three. All right, on three. Okay, ready? Yeah. One, two... Wait, am I lifting on three or after three? No, on three, on okay, three. Okay, okay, ready? Right. One, uh -huh. two, <sighs> three, lift! <sighs> lift, 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 go, 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 there you go! Oh, you got it! Okay. You're not, even, you're not even fall or anything. Okay. It's quite heavy. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, you're handling You make it look light. You're doing really good. You know, Dusty, all this talk about prayer was making me think that there's a verse from the Bible that might be helpful. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, wait, wouldn't that mean that it's time for... Oh, boy, no, this Dusty, is going to be funny. This is too heavy. I can't do it. Don't it's you say it. for the Go Get Your Bible Day! No! Trusty. <laughs> Thanks, Doug. Our Bible verse today comes from 1 John chapter 5, verse 14. Let's look it up together. To find the book of 1 John, we need to go to the New Testament. It's one of the epistles or letters. Now find the big number 5, that's chapter 5, and the little number 14, that's verse 14. It says... There is one thing we can be sure of when we come to God in prayer. If we ask anything in keeping with what he wants, he hears us. Have you ever wondered if God hears your prayers? He does. God loves you. You're his child. And like a loving father, God listens to us and even answers our prayers. Sometimes we ask for things that God knows we don't need. When that happens, we have to trust that our heavenly father knows what's really best for us. Burden, pray, me. 
Welcome back to another What Did We Learn Today game show. That's right, the only game show at the end of this lesson that asks, What Did We Learn Today? <laughs> With your host, Game Show Doug. Now, let's find out who our contestant is for today. <laughs> let's hello there, everyone. <laughs> Why, it's our old pal, Ranger Ron. <laughs> so glad to have you on the show, Ranger Ron. Tell us, uh, what do you enjoy doing for fun? Oh, well, you see, old Ranger Ron likes to uh, uh, take a hike through the woods, uh, uh, walk through the forest, uh, uh, take a stroll through the bush. Okay, wonderful. <laughs> All right, Ranger Ron, it's time to answer your quizzical question. Are you ready? I hope so, because here it comes. What? Does the word amen mean? Is it A, I hope God hears me, B, let it be so, C, my prayer is finished, or D, it's time to eat? 30 seconds on the clock. Oh, 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 that's a doozy, eh? Oh, let me think now. Okay, what does the word amen mean, eh? Like, it's got to mean something. Every word has a meaning, right? But, uh, oh, you know what? After I say amen, it usually is time to eat. So maybe it does mean that, but then... No, because sometimes I pray right before bed, and then I don't get a snack. Running out of time, Ranger Ron. Oh, oh, me, me, let it be so. Judges? We have a winner! I did it! Old Ranger Ron did it! Can you believe it? <laughs> Congratulations! All right, everyone. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you for watching What Did We Learn Today? With your host, Game Show Doug. If you would like to be featured on the What Did We Learn Today Game Show, send us a message at faithful.com. Okay, Doug. I think I'm ready. Ready for what?
to pray. Oh, great. I didn't know we were doing this. Okay, uh, perfect. Well, would you like me to pray with you? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay, good. Ready when you are. Okay. Here I go. Sure. Uh... <clears throat> <clears throat> okay, oh, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna start, I promise. Oh, okay, no rush. Um, mm -hmm. mm, I don't know what to say. <laughs> That's okay, Dusty. You know, sometimes we get nervous praying out loud or in front of other people. I've known lots of people who have that situation. You know, sometimes even I feel that way. You do? Yeah, I do. That's when it's helpful to remember some of the things that Jesus said about prayer. For example, Jesus said, when you pray, don't talk on and on the way ungodly people do. They think they'll be heard because they talk a lot. But don't be like them. Your Father in Heaven knows what you need even before you ask Him. That's Matthew 6, 7 and 8. Hmm. You see, Dusty, when we pray, it's not about the words that we use. Are they the right words? Are they pretty words? Did we say enough words? Those things don't matter all that much. And, you know, if you're afraid to pray in front of other people, well, you can pray like Daniel. Go alone into your room and just pray there. Talk to God about what's on your mind. That does sound easier. Yeah, and Dusty, if you really don't know what to pray, and this goes for you too, kids, you can learn the Lord's Prayer. Oh. It's a prayer that Jesus gave, and it's kind of like an example for us to follow. It goes like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we also forgive those who sin against us. Keep us from falling into sin when we are tempted. Save us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus prayed that prayer? He did. You know, Dusty, the Bible says that Jesus sits at the right hand of God, praying with us and for us, all the time. That's how much he loves us. Wow, and I thought Daniel prayed a lot. <laughs> That's right. Jesus never stops praying for us. You know, Dusty, how would you feel about me wrapping up today's lesson with prayer? That sounds great. Okay, let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, thank you for this lesson on prayer. I ask that you would encourage us to pray often and think about how important it is I pray that we would grow closer in our relationship with you by talking to you regularly. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.